Mega knobs are the richest knobs around, having enough teeth to have a mech build them a custom suit of mega armor. Being knobs, they're inherently angry and belligerent, but being equipped with mega armor means they're not only that, they're also even harder to kill than your average orc. Hello everybody, my name is Spoons Rattling, and for the last couple days of October, we're going to be covering some orcs, starting with the mega knobs, some of the most elite orcs that there are around. Mega knobs come in at 70 points for 2, 105 for 3, 175 for 5, or 210 for 6, uh, about 35 points a model. They have a fairly standard sort of Terminator stat line. They move 5 inches, their toughness 6, a 2 plus save, 3 wounds, leadership 7 plus, and OC 1. This makes them very tough and a little slow, but overall that isn't the end of the world when they are very resilient to a lot of weapons. In terms of ranged weapons, they have a custom shooter, which is Rapid Fire 2, with 4 attacks that hit on 5s at 18 inch range with strength 4, AP 0, and damage 1. A decent enough flurry of anti-infantry shooting, but it's super inaccurate of course. The combi weapon is Rapid Fire 1, anti-infantry 4+, plus and devastating wounds, with only one attack that hits on 5s at 24 inch range with strength 4, AP 0, and damage 1, which is a huge step down from the custom shooter, which honestly this thing has no ground on just given how many more shots the custom shooter has innately. In terms of melee weapons, they can have a kill saw, which is 2 attacks, hit on 4s at strength 12, AP 3, and damage 2, or you can take a twin kill saw, which is twin linked and the same stat line, or you come standard with a Power Claw, which is 3 attacks that hit on 4s at strength 9, AP 2, and damage 2. The Power Claw is more slanted towards dealing with infantry, where the Kill Saw is more slanted to dealing with everything, but it just has lower attacks, which does hurt, but there are ways to circumvent that in the Orc army in general. Their ability is Crumpin' Time. During the battle round in which you call the wall, models in this unit have Feel No Pain 5+. Not as powerful as it was at launch, but definitely a super strong ability, and at 35 points, with that feel no pain, they'll be super resilient to a lot of different weapons, and be very hard to shift, especially given the fact that by the time you can shoot at them when they're in the wall, they likely will have already carved up a huge unit in your army, given how dangerous those kill saws can truly be with certain character buffs. But before we move on to characters, we do need to move on to the loadout section. Every model comes standard with a custom shooter and power claw, and then any number of models can replace their custom shooter and power claw with one of the following. One combi weapon and one power claw, one combi weapon and one kill saw, one custom shooter and one kill saw, one kill saw and one power claw, or one twin kill saw. Of course, I would generally bring the twin kill saw in most, uh, in most places just because the rerolling wounds strength 12 is super useful, and even though it's only two attacks, they are generally very consistent, especially with the buffs they acquire from their leaders, or their usual leaders at least. And if you are running a more ranged unit, or you want to run them as a ranged unit, I would generally bring the custom shooter and the kill saw, just so the shooter can deal with the hordes efficiently enough, and the kill saw can of course deal with tanks pretty well on its own, even without twin linked, just given its uh, high strength AP and damage. But aside from that, uh, I would generally just bring the kill saws, just because they like to be in melee the most, obviously. In terms of buff options, they have three leaders and two transports I'm going to cover. In terms of uh, leaders, the big mech in mega armor is definitely the weakest of the three in melee, but with a 5 plus feel no pain and the ability to restore dead models, as well as the ability to actually heal one of them with his rot oiler, this will make for a super tough unit that can be made even tougher in one detachment, though I think this is uh, more of a objective type unit that just wants to plant their feet on an objective and not move off it. His rerolling ones at range isn't super useful, though I think it does somewhat incentivize bringing the custom shooters over just twin kill saws. The War Boss in Mega Armor makes those saws way more accurate with plus one to hit. His own damage output is very good at strength 12, AP uh, 3, and damage 3 in the law. Uh, and of course, you can gain the Teleporta in uh, Bully Boys, which gives them Deep Strike, so a little bit of orky Deathwing. Uh, Gazgul Mag Uruk Thraka is, of course, the main event. He uh, gives them plus one to hit and plus one to wound, is huge, especially in the law, meaning they wound basically everything in the game on twos and they gain 5 plus critical hits, which is massive in War Horde, and with the 5 plus criticals, uh, or even the lethal hits they get from Akari are super nice too. The Battle Wagon is the perfect transport for Mega Knobs and Gaz. It's super tough and doubles their movement speed, so it's the perfect transport. The truck is not uh, able to be used uh, with Gaz, but it is good with the War Boss, so if you're not running the big man, I would generally bring the truck over the, war over the Battle Wagon. 
The War Horde uh, is, of course, the generic detachment, where all units do pretty well, and the Mega Knobs are no different. With 5 plus sustained hits, they are very good, um, and if you're using the generic characters, you can use Follow Me Lads to uh, get into combat very quickly, especially if you also use Here We Go in the turn of the wall, they will be moving surprisingly fast at the speed of almost like a, a jump pack unit or something like that. It's honestly a, a beautiful sight. They lack the keywords to do anything in Big Hunt, but are still dangerous with Gaz, of course. Similar to Cult of Speed, uh, they lack the keyword, though the boss can have faster than use for extra threat range out of a truck. Dreb Mob, you can double down on durability with Smoky Gubbins, and a big mech does give them access to press that button, which is a very solid buff in melee, or even in shooting. Uh, Green Tide, they offer the big threat, but again, no direct buffs here, and they're the stars of Bully Boys. The second law is huge for these guys, because it gives them effectively 50% more attacks. Um, and these guys are the star unit there. They get many of the buffs and them or normal knobs. Uh, the Teleporta is great for these guys, and Armed to the Teeth is super useful because they're not the most accurate in melee. In terms of competitors, the one that really comes to mind is just normal knobs, really, though boys could be argued, uh, especially Beast Naga boys. But sticking to knobs, I think knobs are by far way less tough, obviously, just given their lack of the mega armor, um, and knobs will generally have enough attacks to bring down anything as well, though these guys will do it much more efficiently, especially against big tough things like knights, where knobs could fall just a little short if things don't go exactly their way. Though knobs will of course be better against hordes, I think they actually complement each other quite well. As I mentioned, knobs are much better against hordes of infantry, as well as other targets. Where mega knobs can deal with hordes, they're also better against things like terminator equivalents, and of course, big knights, which they will absolutely annihilate in about one round of combat every time, especially if they're, if they're with gas, I should say. And then, uh, boys can offer not really competition, they're just different units, I shouldn't really have mentioned them at all, honestly. In terms of their best use, Mega Knobs are pretty honest to their background. They're tough, they are super murderous in close combat, and they're generally flexible in how they can be run, surprisingly enough. As I mentioned in War Horde, with Follow Me Lads and Here We Go, they can be super fast, um, uh, moving at, what, a minimum of 9 inches, or if you're advancing, a minimum of 10 inches. Um, and of course, uh, they make great units and transports. They are, of course, a must-run with Gazgul Thraka, uh, being, again, powerful enough to take down anything in the game, especially in the wall. Again, Chaff could slow them down, so it wouldn't be a bad idea to bring a unit of, say, uh, Ludas or something similar to that to deal with infantry that get in their way, or, or Flash Gits would do the job just as well. Um, they, if you're not running Gaz and you're bringing the War Boss and Mega Armor, presumably, they make very solid units that jump out of a truck to deal with uh, tanks, though they won't have nearly as much anti-infantry melee, so be careful about charging them into places where they could get bogged down, which could really slow them down. Um, uh, in general, they are dead hard and ready for stomping, especially in the law. Um, they will really, really be death dealers in that situation. Overall, I think they are hugely better than they were before, and in general are a star unit. I've been Spoons Rattling, I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you all next time when we cover our next orc unit, which uh, I'm not actually sure what it's going to be yet, but I will see you all then.